I'll be here. Oh, it takes time. us time. Yeah. Coaches yeah. always take their time. I love that. I'm like, this yeah. is what's going on in the light, YouTube light. I, I know you from like soccer. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Dr. Gu Hu. I'm the one that worked Oh, Jim's here. You can everybody hide. Okay. <laughs> Oh, hey Jason, before I forget, hey, I have to make the comment. I have to, Jason. I have to, Jason Trimble. I have to make the comment to Coach Roman that, you, that he's your double ganger. I have to. I have to. When he gets here. Hey, we, hey guys, where Jason go? He's here. Do you have me wrong, Mom? Hello, Joe. Hi, Jim Smuts. Oh, Thomas, how are you? How are you? I got my Raven hat on, but I'm actually going to go get my Raven's hair right now. Hi, Jim. Hey, Jim Smuts, you see me? I do, Joe. I see you. How are you? Raven. Oh, Raven. Hey, Jim Smuts. Hey, Jim Smuts. Hey, and then, gentlemen, mm -hmm. you got dollars I see you, Kenny. There we go. I finally hey, found you. Hey, guys. Hey, man. Hey, 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 I got my I'm going to one of these, isn't it? Hey, Kevin, go. Hey, everyone. Hey, you want to come over? I'm going to go on mute here. Five, Kevin, go. Three. Hi, Jason. Come back for you. Hello, Jason. All right. And Jim. All right, Jim, you should be your should be live, right? Yes, sir. It's uh, I'll tell you what you you are the omnipotent one. The ability to silence that crowd is. <laughs> Holy smokes. Thankfully, it's only one button. <laughs> hey, can you tell me, is, yeah, <laughs> is, is Liz Canfee on the call? Uh, I looked at the participant name. Yeah, I, I do believe. So Good. Uh, okay, I thought it, let me, let me double check. Okay. Okay, JKL. Uh, no, not on. All right, cool. And I've got... Uh, uh, Christine Hughes is on from Charlotte. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, Coach Coach Roman, you're on mute, but I think you have to unmute yourself because I cannot. I just unmuted. Okay. Good. <laughs> awesome. How you guys doing? Good, Coach. Thanks for joining us. Oh, it's it's a, it's amazing to be here with you. It's awesome to have you. We've got we've got forty one athletes on here, Coach. You are the most popular sports talk person we've had so far. Uh, that's great. Um, thanks everybody for joining. We'll go. We'll go ahead, Jason. You ready for me to go ahead and get started? Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, great. Well, we'll go ahead, Coach. Um, and first of all, thanks again so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. It's awesome to have you on here with with our athletes. Um, taking the time out of your schedule. It's, it's amazing. Um, you know, we understand uh, you're working uh, year round 24 seven to make sure those guys are ready to play even in this environment. So it's, it's terrific that you've been able to take the time to join us. So we're going to start out with, we've got some, some questions from, from our athletes that uh, they provided to us in advance. We're going to uh, open up their mics and let them start with some of the questions. So we make sure we get them in. Um, and then I've got a few questions for you. And then at the end, if, if we can, Coach, we've got our summer games that were unfortunately canceled. And I know in addition to these 42 athletes, we've got 
8,716 other athletes who would love to hear from you. We've, we're going to do a virtual block party with our summer games. So uh, at the end, we can record a message if you'd like to share something for the, for the entire um, universe of Special Olympics Maryland athletes. So does that sound like a plan to you? Uh, it sounds great. Perfect. Well, Liz Canfee is, is, I don't think has joined us, but she had some, some good questions to get us started. So why don't we start with that? And I'll go ahead and ask him, and then I'll move on to Christine Hughes. The, the first question is, how long have you been a coach in the NFL? Well, I've been a coach in the NFL for 23 years, and then two in college at Stanford University in California, and one in high school at Holy Spirit High School in New Jersey. And I've, that Holy Spirit High School one is we're going to we're going to put that to the side on hold. I've got I'm, I want to ask you about that a little bit later, because that that seems like it, it might have played a significant role in your career and also says a lot about you. So what the other fo the follow up question from Chris uh, from Liz was, how did you get started in, in coaching? Well, that's a great question. Um, I got started um, when I was a little kid. My uncle wrote books. Uh, he wrote uh, almost 80 books. And one of them was with a man named Paul Brown. No way. Paul Brown was uh, basically the father of modern football. So I got to, as a little kid, be around Paul Brown and see and learn. And I became very curious and interested in the coaching profession. So I read a lot of books about coaching and, um, I was able to uh, start with the Carolina Panthers in 1995. Um, I didn't make any money, really, but I, I really uh, was thrilled to have the opportunity to uh, work for them. Well, that's actually a good segue, because the next question, uh, Jason, can you open up Christine Hughes' line? Christine is actually a special mix athlete from North Carolina. So given that you started in, in Charlotte, we thought we'd let Christine ask you a question, even though she's not one of our special mix Maryland athletes. Great. Hey, Coach Greg. It's very nice to meet you. Um, uh, since one of my que my question was asked already, I'm going to have, I'm going to think on the fly here. Um, can I first know the title of your coaching position? So I know how to ask this question. Yes, I'm the offensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. Okay. What is your responsibility um, during game time as an offensive coordinator? That's a great question, Christine. Um, well, during the game, I, I basically call the plays into the quarterback, and, uh, and then he runs those plays. But, uh, yeah, I, I basically am in charge of the strategy and tactics – uh, during the game. So it happens very fast. You got to be really, uh, everything changes so fast in an NFL game. Uh, you just got to be really prepared. Um, sometimes does a head coach overrule the call? I was always wondering that. Uh, not really. Um, not really. Um, we try to talk things out ahead of time. So he has an idea, but we're always communicating about what we're doing. So that, that really helps. Those are good, really good questions. Thank you for being here today. Oh, Chris, Christine, thanks so much. Hey, uh, Jason, if you could op open up Thomas Smith, and I, I, I want to take this opportunity, um, Coach, to acknowledge Thomas, because really Thomas is the reason that you're here. Okay. You've, you've obviously been able to start a relationship. Hi, Hi Coach Roman. Hey, Thomas, how you doing, pal? How are you? I'm great, man. You sound great. How you doing? Good. Wonderful. All right, Thomas. You, Thomas, you get, do you have, a, you have a question for him? Yes. What do you think of the 2020 draft class? Uh, for the Baltimore Ravens, Thomas? Yes. Uh, we're really excited about it. We got a lot of good players on offense and defense, and um, we really addressed some uh, needs that we had. Uh, but these young men are very fine people, and they they're hard workers, and uh, we really think they'll be uh, able to help our team and make it better. 
uh, all of them. So we're very excited about it. Excellent. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for coming tonight, Coach Roman. Always a pleasure, Thomas. You take care, my friend. How's it going at your, your job? Good. Five days, a week. Five days a week. Wow, that's great, buddy. Proud of you. Thank you. Hey, Thomas, did you have a follow-up question for Coach? Do you have a follow-up? You want to ask him how Matthew is? Yeah. How's Matthew? Well, my brother Matthew, um, he is doing well. He's in New Jersey. He's healthy, as I hope all you are. And he's really doing some smart things with social distancing, like I hope all of you are. Watching yes. his washing his hands a lot and, uh, you know he's disappointed he can't do special this summer either uh, but he's staying positive and uh, he's helping out his mother ask him if the season will start on time the season will start on time oh yeah we hope we sure hope so we really think it will thank you, awesome. thank you. nice job uh, thomas thank you all right, hey, uh, Jason, can you open up Sam, Sam Livingston? Sam is live. Hey, Coach, Hello, how are you? First things first. I'm great, thank you. How are you doing? I can't complain. Um, my question to you is, what are the plans with Mr. J.K. Dobbins, a.k.a. The Mr. Ohio State? Because I know that you guys have Mark Ingram as the starting running back right now. And I know someday, obviously, that Mark, Mark is going to have to retire or go to another team, and, and I'm pretty sure that J.K. Dobbins will hopefully be ready to start. I just want to know if you guys are going to be having him share duties with uh, Mark, or is Mark going to mentor him? Well, first of all, I love your hat. Thank you. Actually, I wore it one time skiing. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, J.K. is a very talented young man, and we're very excited to have him. And he's joining a very talented group of running backs, um, not just Mark Ingram, who is just a phenomenal running back and a great leader, um, but uh, we also have Gus the Bus. And uh, so we really like our running backs. Mm -hmm. So I think JK will be able to fit in really well. We're not sure how it's all going to go yet, but once we get out and practice and get a feel for how those guys are doing, I think we'll know that answer, but I'm, I'm sure they'll all be very, uh, very, um, they'll all have a big role in what we do. Mm -hmm. Also, um, one quick thing. I have actually a buddy that works with you guys. I'm pretty sure you met him, uh, Daniel Stern. Oh, yeah, Daniel. Yeah, he actually is a really good friend of my sister's. He went to uh, high school with everybody. Oh, cool. He's a good guy. Very good guy and very smart guy. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Coach, for coming again. Big help. Uh, Jason, can you meet me, please? Nice job, Sam. Uh, let's go to David Godoy. David, you're live. Hello, Coach. Nice to meet you. How are you? Hey, David. How are you doing? Um, what, what do you think about because the players have a lot of uh, time to rest and for the coming season, which we hopefully will be coming in September, do you think they will be extra ready, extra rested for the season? Oh, wow. And, and also, um, Justin Tucker, he is the best football uh, field. He, he has some good kicking. Uh, how is he doing so far? Good questions. Um, I think the players um, are working very hard right now, and um, we're trying to get as much work done as we can during this pandemic. And um, I, I do think they might be a little bit more rested, and uh, but they got to be in great shape. So when they get we get, when we're able to get back to practice, um, it, we're going to have to be really smart about how we get them in back into shape. Um, you guys know that from, from when you compete in the Special Olympics. The more you practice something, the better you get at it. So um, we're going to really have to take advantage of our practice time, just like you do. And uh, Justin Tucker is one of the greatest kickers to ever live. And uh, he is a really good teammate, and he is doing really well. Great question. 
that's good to hear. He is one of my best players. I yeah. love him very much. Great. I'll, I'll tell him, too, when I see him. Well, speaking of Justin Tucker, Elena Camacho, do you want to ask your question? J uh, Jason will unmute you. Yeah, Elena, you're good. Hi, Coach. Thank you for joining. Is it true that Justin Tucker really sings opera in the locker rooms? Oh, wow. The cat's out of the bag. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll sing in, meeting, in our meeting rooms, too, when we're all in there for a meeting. Uh, he'll start singing opera. You don't know. You never know what he's going to start singing. He's got a really good voice, and uh, it kind of keeps everybody um, on their toes because you never know when Justin's going to just start singing out of the blue, and you never know what he's going to start singing. But it'll probably be pretty good. And he's my favorite player, and I actually met him at the 2014 training camp. So when you see him again, tell him Elena says hi. I sure will. And I agree. He is the best kicker ever in the NFL. Yeah, he really works hard at it. Excellent. Great job, Elena. Um, hey, Jason, can you open up uh, John Rock? Yeah, John, you ready? I kind of got the Rock family here. <laughs> so um, we were wondering how far but they have a hard time handling, I guess, the pressure in the postseason. So we were wondering what you were going to do to help them with that. And then we were also wondering, does the does the pack ever ignore your call and and do like his own thing? All right, thanks for that, Coach. Did you pick up on those two questions? I think so. Um, well, Lamar was the youngest quarterback to ever start a playoff game two years ago. So uh, we feel like uh, he's still a young quarterback and all these experiences he, he's getting are really, really quality experiences. A lot of young quarterbacks don't have, uh, you know, don't get to the playoffs or they don't get the opportunity to see what it's like. So I think we as a uh, unit uh, are really going to, you know, work hard to get to the playoffs and then um, then that's when we got to really buckle down and get our work done. So I think the past couple of years have been really good experiences for Lamar. And now he always runs, he always runs the right play. And, uh, the thing about Lamar is whatever play you run, uh, if the original play breaks down, he's got such great athletic ability. He can kind of run another play after the first, if the first one doesn't work. <laughs> So that's pretty, pretty neat. All right. Coach, can you just uh, share what you just described, though? I think there's, there's a lesson there for our athletes in terms of, and particularly how people perceive performance um, and the attitude with which we approach our, not only sports, but life. You know our special mix oath, let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. And I think what you just described about Lamar is a really good lesson for our athletes that every experience is an opportunity to grow and become better. And I think it, it sounds like you are able to work with Lamar to help him do that and become better through those experiences. Yeah, of course. I think it's one of the, one of the most important lessons in sports. Um, and even as a coach like myself, when I was a younger coach, I was, I coached on a lot of teams that didn't win many games. Um, and those are tough times, but you actually learn more when that stuff happens than you do when you're constantly winning, which is the goal or try, you know, being successful, but the journey of winning or being successful, whether you're competing in the special Olympics, the NFL, uh, the most important thing is that journey that you're always giving your best. And you always try to learn from all your experiences. So uh, that's a process and enjoy the process and learn from it and you'll improve. And the more you do something and apply yourself to it and try to do your best, you will improve. And that's what we're looking to do as well. That's great. Thanks for that, Coach. Hey, Jason, can you open up Tyler Kirsch? Right. 
so yeah, Tyler, Tyler you're, go ahead. You're, 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 good, you're good. Thank you, coach. Thank you, coach, and everybody for letting me be here today. Um, I'm a huge Ravens fan, and I have a huge, huge um question. Um, my favorite player is Miles Boykin. He reminds me of Des Bryant back in my days when he played for the Cowboys. Um, do you guys do you guys think that he's going to have a breakout year? Um, competing with um, Howie Wood Brown and the young the young receivers who you guys just got in the draft. Yeah, we really think Miles is going to have a big year this year. Um, we we kind of felt when we drafted him that it might take him a year to uh, fully get acclimated to the NFL, and he did a very good job with what we asked him to do. And I think this year we'll ask him to do a lot more. And I think he'll be ready for it. And we're really excited to see him have that breakout year. Um, but uh, I'm glad you're a Ravens fan. Where do you live? Well, I live in Pasadena, Maryland. I went to Severno Park High School. Oh, great. Where yeah. Steve Bashotti went. Wow. Yeah, we're really excited about Miles. And uh, he's oh, got – He's got all the tools to be successful, and he's a he's a fine young man. Yes, he is. Good, good question, Tyler. Uh, let's go to ba uh, Bailey Maywinny. What has what has been your favorite mo moment since you started with the Ravens? Wow, that's a great question. My favorite moment with the Ravens. Oh man. Uh, there's been a lot of them. Uh, I don't know. I'll tell you what. Last year when we went down to Miami on opening day and everybody thought we, we weren't going to be very good and that Lamar wasn't going to do good and, you know, that we were just going to be probably average. Mm -hmm. And we ended up winning 59 to 10 and we had like 650 yards of offense. And that was a really cool moment to see the players – uh, have that kind of success and the team have that kind of success. Um, there's so many, geez. Um, another fun one was Monday night football against the Rams last year when uh, we went out to Los Angeles, California. Mm. Uh, and, uh, I think we won 45 mm. to 10 or something like that. But our guys were just playing at such a high level um, that um, – it was just it's so fun to watch as a coach to have the people you work with do so well and perform so well. So those are a couple that come to mind. Also, when the Patriots came in last year, uh, we were really concerned about their defense was so good coming into that game. It was the greatest defense through eight games, I believe, in the history of the National Football League. And it was very, very taxing to prepare for that team. Um, and we, we played really, really well and uh, had a good game. So those were some, some examples of that. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. Uh, let's, go to, let's go to Kenny Long. All right, Kenny, you're up. OK, hey, Coach. Um, hey, Kenny are, Kenny, are you in your man cave? Yeah. Can you show, yeah. Coach? Can you show Coach your – Coach, this is one of the best Ravens managers I think I've ever seen. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll spotlight him. All right. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, and some cool. of his sign. Wow, that's that awesome. Was fun. Oh, and then Ray wow. Lewis, when wow. I went to training camp, I got a sign. Seconds I won at an auction. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. And a wrestler, of Becky Lynch. <laughs> yep, yep, the man. All right. So, Kenny, what's your question? Uh, okay. uh, um, how, um, um, what, 
what is that new receiver's name? Is he gonna go run fast? That he got in the draft. You talking about Devin Duvernay? Yeah. Yeah, you know it's He's funny. Gonna... I, I was flipping through the channels last night watching TV, and there was a game on yesterday. It was uh, it was uh, Texas against uh, I think LSU from last year, and I turned on the TV. And as soon as I turned on the TV, he caught a pass, broke a tackle, and ran 50 yards for a touchdown. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of was – it got me really excited. And uh, – but uh, I'm very excited about him. He's a, a yeah. young – got some really good strength, speed, and quickness to him. Yeah. We need two cool. fast guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speed is always a good thing. Yeah. So, so coach, if you if you need a a, a special mix athlete to make a draft pick next year for you guys, we can do Kenny from his man cave. Yeah, that would be cool. Mm -hmm. I might recommend that. That'd be, that would be awesome. I'm telling you what, Kenny Kenny is the number one uh, Ravens fan that I know of our special mix Maryland athletes for sure. That's awesome. And, Great, and coach. You'll you'll. You'll ha you'll be happy to know he's also a really good power lifter. Really? Yeah, you could bring him into the weight room and have some fun with uh, with your guys. Yeah, Kenny, you do deadlifts? Yeah. That's awesome. And guess what? I don't live far from the defense coordinator. What's that? I don't live far from the defense coordinator. Oh, really? Link. Really? Yeah. He and I are going to do a Zoom call after this is up. We have to start doing some planning. Okay. Training camp, yeah. so he and I'll be on a Zoom call. When, yeah, tell him I, say hi. I will. And, you know, and from Raven Nest, fourteen. Hey, hey, Kenny, tell, Kenny, tell Coach how much what what your best ever deadlift is. Uh, Do you remember? Yeah, I think it was three three twenty three hundred twenty five on deadlift. Holy cow, that's amazing. Keep doing it, buddy. Keep working, yeah. man. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I hope I have power in this season. Right. Nice I, job, Kenny. Working yeah. hard. Yeah. Hey, Jason, why don't we, why don't we try Sierra? Uh, she wanted to have, ask a question. Sierra, you have to unmute yourself. I'm afraid I can't do that. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. Okay. All right, I have like three questions. Um, I'm so sorry, I'm like nervous right now. Uh, I'll be it, nervous. All right, the first question is, is it your dream to become a head coach? Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if it happens, that would be great. But uh, I love what I do. And uh, I really try to em embrace uh, what I do. I've worked very hard to get here and do what I do. And I just appreciate every moment I can doing what I do. And if it happens, it happens. And, uh, but if not, that's okay too. All right. Uh, the second question is, how did you, how did you feel? Like what was your reaction after you won the NFL of uh, assistant coach of the year? I think you won that, right? Pretty sure. I, I did. And I was, uh, yeah. I was very humbled by it, and the fact of the matter is that there are so many people that help me do my job, and I help them do their job, so it's really a team effort. So, you know, my name is on the award, but it's really a tribute to everybody uh, that, that works together. It's just, just like any other team. It's really a team effort, so I was really proud and happy for everybody that uh, they recognize us like that. All right, my final question is, um, do you think the Ravens are going to uh, finish, like, like first in the like, winning record like they did last year? Since Lamar and Justin Tucker in the game, and they helped us win throughout the, <laughs> the whole season, yeah. Yeah, we, I mean, we have high expectations, and we want to, we want to make the Baltimore Ravens um, the best team we can possibly be. And we want to win it all, uh, you know, and every team wants to. But we really feel like if we put
put our minds to it and work hard and stay consistent. And uh, everybody does their job and really um, takes a lot of pride in their job and how they do their job and helping each other. We really feel like we could have a special team. Thank you so much. I was like dying to meet you and all that. Thank you. Sarah, good job. Uh, Jason, let's go to Amanda Cohen. Uh, Amanda, you're going to have to uh, unmute Thank yourself, you. please. I have a question about Ronnie Stanley. Are you going to try and get him back this year and extend his contract? Because he is a good linebacker. Yeah, Ronnie, boy, we got some really smart questions here. People, you got really smart. You know what's going on. Ronnie Stanley is, is – uh, really coming into his own. Uh, he's a really smart guy too. He, uh, he's a very interesting guy and a very nice, nice young man. And he, uh, he's a very good football player. He plays tackle for us. And uh, we really hope that we can keep him for a while uh, because, you know, he's such a good guy and a good player. So, uh, but he'll definitely be playing for the Ravens this year. All right, good question. Thanks coach. Danielle Marino, do you have a question? Yeah, I, I, I have one. Um, I know I have one of the waivers that yeah, got to the Penn State player. I know, um, do you know um, Trace Masoli? Oh, I sure do. <laughs> I'm a biggest fan of him. I, I love Penn State a lot. And he's my, he's my whole favorite player ever. And he's kind of cute. <laughs> But I know him. My my parents told me that um, Trace Masoli does stuff to the Ravens, and I I hope about that, and I'm gonna miss him. But he's he's a great player for the Ravens, also. Yeah, Trace Trace had an amazing career at Penn State. He really helped turn that thing around. So you guys were lucky to have him, and we're lucky to have him too. Um, he's he's a a really good young man works very hard and he's uh, very talented and he takes his job very seriously. So um, when I tell, I'll tell him he's got a great fan out there when I see him. Awesome. Way to go, Danielle. Uh, Jason, how about Jason Song? Uh, so Jason Song, you have to unmute yourself. I have a question. Perfect. Go, Jason. You're good. This Jason song. Will they allow fans at the M&T Bank Stadium in the seats? Jason, how you doing, pal? Yeah, I'm, I'm great. Great, Coach. Great. Greg, how, you, how you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, we don't know yet how that's all going to go, but I sure hope there are because uh, our fans are so amazing and when uh when we do well the stadium at mnt bank is just amazing uh, it's an amazing environment there's no place on earth like it and uh we really hope the fan the fans are a big part of that and we sure hope the fans will be there but at some point they will be i don't know when uh, hopefully this year yeah i hope so too so thank you thanks coach greg you're welcome thank you jason all right, let's see. Let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually, uh, if, if athletes, if you guys have some more questions, go ahead and, and put them in the chat. I'm going to ask a couple of questions of Coach. A um, couple of things. Uh, how would you describe, uh, you know, you had a question earlier about Lamar. How would you describe working with Lamar from a leadership standpoint, a lot of the athletes that we have on this call are, have gone through our athlete leadership program. So, um, and you talked about Lamar's youth. How would you describe how, what it's been like to work with him since, since he arrived with the Ravens? Well, Lamar is, Lamar is a great guy and Lamar really cares genuinely about his teammates. And I think that's what makes him uh, one of the main reasons he's a really good leader is his teammates believe in him because 
he knows, they know that Lamar really cares about his teammates. Uh, he does a very good job communicating with his teammates and uh, supporting them. And if something goes wrong, Lamar never blames the problem on anybody else. He always tries to take the blame for something if something goes wrong and uh, really tries to fix the problem if it comes up. But uh, he's a very high energetic, enthusiastic player and uh, very talented and uh, really, really, really competitive, really, really wants to win. And, uh, you know, he's had so much success in such a short time. Um, but I don't notice anything different about him. I think he's going to keep getting better. That's awesome. And, you know, earlier in the introduction, you talked about uh, some of the different places you coached and you mentioned the, uh, the year that you're at Holy Spirit High School, which is your alma mater. Is that correct, Coach? Yes. Can you, can you describe how important that was uh, from your perspective in your career as it relates to having been a coach in the NFL and then going back and coaching at the high school level? Yeah, it was definitely um, – not traditional um, thinking, I guess you call it, but I actually coached for 13 years in the NFL, and then I went back to coach at my high school. Uh, you know, it was amazing transition for me to be able to work with all the young kids, and uh, you know, I was able to help help out a lot of kids, you know, for a year. Um, so that was really rewarding, and um, I definitely think. <laughs> It's uh, it's a, it's it was very unique, but uh, but it really kind of set me on a path that uh, you know ended up being pretty good. So uh, I just really cherish those memories of working with those young kids, and uh, you know it was really special. That's awesome. Hey, Jason, can you open up Steve Bennett? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Fire away. Hey, Coach. Uh, this is Steve Bennett from Special Mix, Maryland. One of the questions I wanted to ask you is, as a coach, uh, what's the most important thing that you look for or you want um, from your own athletes? Well, um, I want a lot of things from them. <laughs> but if I had to, if I had to pick one, um, it would probably be um, somebody that um, whatever they're trying to do, they're trying to be, do the best that they possibly can. And that's something that I try to uh, teach my own kids that it doesn't matter if you're sweeping up the garage or you're putting the shopping carts back, whatever your job might be, or if you're powerlifting or doing sprints or doing the softball throw or the high jump or whatever, whatever you're doing, playing golf or basketball uh, for Special Olympics, whatever you're doing, do the best you possibly can. And uh, really try to take the talents that uh, God gave you and try to be the best you can be. Very good. Thanks, Coach. And again, thanks for being here with us tonight. Thanks for having me. Hey, Jason, how about Kevin Gold? All right, Kevin. What's your favorite player, coaching? Good question, Kevin. What's your favorite part of coaching, Coach? Oh, that's a great question, Kevin. Um, mm. You know, I enjoy all of it, but the, the best part is when you see your players, your athletes, um, doing well. And when you teach them something, if you can somehow teach them to uh, kind of own something and master it, and then they can carry on. Um, that's what really, um, really is rewarding when you see your players get it and take the coaching and work hard and have success. That, that's really rewarding. All right. Um, Coach, you mentioned earlier, it's, it's amazing, uh, your uncle and his relationship with Paul Brown uh, you went to school at John Carroll, which is also 
noted for its lineage of coaches. Did you were you aware of the history of the coaches at that had come from John Carroll before you went there? Yeah, I mean to tell you, um, once I found out that Don Shula went to John Carroll, that's when I really became interested in the school, and it's probably the reason I, I went there. I you know really liked it when I went there and visited, but I was actually going to go to a different school. And uh, went, heard about Don Shula, went there and went and visited. And that's when I really decided that was the place for me. And so did, did you go there with the intent? Did you always want to be a coach? You know, maybe subconsciously. I didn't really know that. Uh, but I was so interested in it. And I had literally read dozens and dozens of books on coaching. So it was football coaching specifically. So it was a, you know, a real hobby of mine I, I guess you'd call it at that point but um I didn't I didn't really know where it would go that's awesome um a couple other questions um how hard has it been for you um and honestly you know what I, I I've been remiss in asking how are you and your family doing everybody healthy with you and your family yes thank you for asking everybody's good yeah, we're, we're really trying to follow the guidelines and do our social distancing and, um, and try to stay as healthy as we can. Yeah, so, and this is a time where you all would start to really start to ramp up with uh, the OTAs and, and uh, some mini camps coming up. How hard is it right now without being able to be, um, you know, up at the training center and, and preparing to do that? Yeah, I think we, I mean, we all miss it. Um, and but we can't do anything about it. So all we can really focus on is trying to make the best of the situation. And, uh, you know, and I think we will, I think we are, but uh, it's uh, you, you miss going to work every day and seeing everybody and practicing and whatnot. So, uh, but we will, we'll get back. We'll be all right. And, and so, some of the, some of our athletes kind of alluded to this, but how would you describe the relationship that you have with the other coaches. You talked about when you get off of this call, you're going to have a coach, uh, a call with Coach Martindale. How would you describe the environment and the culture um, of this coaching staff and how you all get along? Oh, wow. That's, that's, that's an interesting question because a lot of times, um, you know, a lot of people don't realize that uh, we got a, a lot of coaches and they're all very important and they all, um, you know, you all, you have to be able to function and work together as a team, as coaches, just like anybody else. And, um, they're so important and we have a very, very, very good relationship. Everybody respects each other's job and, uh, everybody treats each other the way they should be treated. And, uh, it really allows us to, to be able to, uh, be the best we can be. Because, uh, you know, teamwork is so important. And, um, you know, when you have all these people working together, it really makes you stronger. That's awesome. Well, thanks for that, Coach. Hey, Jason, if you could open up Elena's uh, line. I think she's got a good question for Coach. Yeah, uh, Elena, you have to open up your line. I can't do that. Oh, there we go. There you go. So, do you miss seeing all – the players and how are they all staying connected with each other during these times? Cause I'm sure they miss, you know, going out and working with each other and just seeing each other off the field. Well, that's, that's, that's a really insightful question. Um, a lot like we're doing right now. Uh, we have zoom calls all the time. You know, uh, th those guys will also call or text each other um, a lot. Uh, we have football Zoom meetings four days a week. So we're all on it just like we are right now. It's very, very much the same thing. And those guys, but they'll also call each other, text each other, and uh, really stay in contact with each other. So I think everybody understands what's going on and uh, everybody's staying connected the best they can. Good question. You're welcome. Yeah, way to go, Elena. Hey, Jason, let's try Amanda Moore. Uh, Amanda Moore, you have to unmute yourself, please. 
Yep, you're good. Last year for my birthday, I got picked from Special Olympics go to Play 60 training camp, and I'm just met Dustin Tucker and all of the ratings. Players. It's really awesome. It's my birthday race last year. And I have fun. Way to go, Amanda. Thanks for sharing that with Coach. Yeah, thank you very much. That's great to hear. Hey, Jason, let's try Justin Willis. Uh, Justin, unmute yourself, please. Yep. Hey, um, it's working, right? It is. Yeah, um, man, I, I really love the Ravens. Um, what did you think about that time when the in the Super Bowl when the power went out and then they had to like re, um, when they had the oh god, I'm so nervous. I just but yeah, you're good, power. Justin. You're good, Justin. You're doing great, man. Yeah, you're doing great. Man, that was just, that was cool. I mean, I mean, I was like, oh, I was so. Nervous they were going. I thought that was it, and I was like, "Oh no!" Because they were going to win that. that time. Yeah, that was that was crazy. You know what's funny? Even crazier is <laughs> I, I was the offensive coordinator for the San Francisco <laughs> Forty Nine. So I was I was on the other side. That so is you, crazy. That would be a great trivia question, I think, Coach. I know yeah, it was. It definitely bought me some more time to figure out what to do to turn trying to turn the tide because we were getting crushed. Yeah, I could pee and uh, swim into my, uh, me and my, my, uh, I'm a, it's me and my mom and uh, that's my swimming I do. Oh, great. There you swimming. go. Swimming's great exercise. They own bowling and swimming. Awesome. And horseback, horseback riding. Are you able to do any swimming during this time? Um, yeah, we got a pool out back. I'm trying, I'm going to start training. I was going to train at Six Flags America's Wave Pool, but shut down. Yeah, well, that's good. I'll go in their wave, I'll go in their wave pool and swim back and forth. Yeah. Hey, Justin, we need you to go in your pool and get a, get a video and send that in so we can put it in our virtual block. Oh, it's not open. I wish it was. It's oh, uh, okay. I mean, I, I run my bike every day. For, All right, good for you. My bike every day. Great. I'll send that. Hey, hey, Jason, can we get Sam Livingston? He said he's got another question. Sam, you're up. Um, so before I forget, you said you coached with uh, Jim Harbaugh for a number of years. So what's it like to be with him and now we be with um, his brother? Yeah, that's pretty unique, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, my, actually, my cousins and my uncle went to Stanford. Actually, my uncle works at Stanford now. It's wow. Mm -hmm. but, uh, That's a yeah, uh, both of them are really great coaches and great people. Mm -hmm. I always like to uh, surround myself with great people. And uh, I'm lucky and fortunate to have been around some great people there. Mm -hmm. their, um, their mother and father I've gotten to know quite well, too. And yeah, Jack and I forgot her name. Yeah, Jack and Jackie. <laughs> and yeah. uh, they're, uh, they're wonderful people, too, and the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Um, so it's been – John and Jim are very different but very similar, and they're both really good at what they do, and they're really good people. Mm -hmm. Also, if you ever need to hide somewhere, I found someone that can be your replacement. Jason Schrimmel, actually, is your double ganger, as I think you guys look almost exactly alike. So I could very much see – you, him taking your place if you need to go hide somewhere. Well, he needs to, he needs to trim that beard. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go there. <laughs> um, hey, Jason, let's try uh, Melissa Jeffers. Hey, Melissa, you are live. Hi, Coach. Hey. I heard some of the Ravens got injured. When will they come back for the season? Well, I think we're pretty. We got some, we're pretty fortunate. Because um, I said someone got injured on their knees. Uh, 
a player. Yeah, when, well, when when players get injured, um, we have a great staff of doctors. Matt Sakura, that's it, yeah. We have a great staff of doctors and trainers that uh, really work hard to uh, help them get better as fast as possible. And, uh, you know, our guys work very hard to stay injury free. Um, but sometimes things happen and I'm sure sometimes things happen to you guys and gals too, uh, when you're competing and when that happens, you got to do what the doctors tell you and work hard at getting back to, uh, 100%. And that's what our guys are doing. I think, um, Ray Lewis will play the football again with them, the Ravens. Uh, I think, I think Ray's done playing, but he's really a uh, very, very uh, good leader for the team still. He uh, had a Zoom call with us a couple weeks ago and really got everybody fired up and focused. That's awesome. All right, Coach, we're going to go ahead and start to wind this down. I, and I really want to take advantage of the opportunity to, again, thank Thomas Smith, who really spearheaded this. Um, and can you just tell uh, the athletes, our athletes that are on this call, why, when Thomas reached out to you a couple of years ago, why, why did you respond to him? Well, he reached out to me uh, out of the blue, sent me a great email, and uh, I was so impressed with it that I emailed him back, and we've been emailing each other uh, ever since. And he's such a nice guy um, that we really enjoy um, corresponding with each other. Um, and uh, it was really, uh, really Thomas that started it, and uh, we have a great relationship now. And have you ever seen Thomas compete? Yes, I got up to Towson. Uh, my whole family went to Towson um, last year, I believe, and we saw him compete. Yeah, we saw a lot of uh, athletes compete, but we had a great time. That's awesome. Well. I, I really appreciate your uh, locked in on that. Well, and the first time that you and I met was at a Play 60 clinic, and it was there that I learned about your brother, Matthew. Um, can you describe for uh, our athletes how important Special Olympics and, and your brother, Matthew, have been in your life? Well, yeah. My, my brother, Matthew, um, he's 49 years old, and uh, he's about a year and a half older than me. And ever since we were little, little guys running around, he was in the Special Olympics, and I would always go and cheer him on. And uh, we used to go, you know, um, at least once, if not twice a year. And we would all he would play basketball, and um, you know, he's into golf. He does golf now. Uh, but uh, you know, I spent a lot of my time as a kid going to Special Olympics, especially in the summertime. And uh, one year when I was in college, when I got, came home from college, I helped coach a softball team up in New Jersey. Um, so that was really special. But my brother Matthew, was uh, he, uh, he's been a huge impact on my life. And, uh, and he continues to be to this day. So really, I'm really, really lucky. And what sports in, in – I think we talked about this because I think he's evolved to the point where he's doing some different sports now, but in, in his lifetime in Special Olympics, what sports has Matthew participated in? Yeah, um, track and field when he was younger, softball throw, basketball, um, you know, all the different running, uh, broad jump, um, all that's all that, and then um, swimming, and then he's transitioned now that he's a little bit older into golf and bocce, Bocce ball. Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, geez, he's pretty much done them all. Soft, you know, he played softball. So uh, he's done quite a bit. That's awesome. And did you say that he, he actually lives with your mom? Yes, he does. Yeah. Up in New Jersey. That's awesome. Um, okay, Jason, I got one more question. I think it'd be, it'd be fitting before we, we sign off here. Um, and 
before we do sign off, Coach, I'm going to ask you if you would share a message for all our athletes. But Kenny Long, you're the, the, the number one Ravens fan in the man cave. Can we go back to Kenny? He's got, a, I think, a really good question here. All right, Kenny. I forgot which one was that. Mm. Say it again, Kenny. I forgot which one was that. Okay, it was. Are, are there going to be any new plays this year? Oh yeah, going to be any new plays? Oh yeah, there's always going to be new plays. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. But yes. but coach, coach, not a whole new playbook though, right? No. 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 <laughs> this little twinkle. Like we need to get. We need to. We need to just keep working and getting better at a lot of the things we do right now. Just like you guys and gals with uh, whatever sports you guys are competing in, you keep practicing and you keep getting better. And uh, you know, but we will definitely have some new plays, and uh, those are always the fun ones. But uh, but now we we uh, we like to keep people on guessing. We like to keep guessing as to what we're going to do next. Some of the time, not all the time. Well, Coach, you do a pretty good job. I was watching um, NFL Network, uh, and I don't know if it was this morning uh, that I saw something online, but they, they brought up the the fourth down play out in Seattle. Yeah. And they they just – they charted every player on the field. So there were your, your fourth – I think it was fourth and two. It was. And no wide receivers. Stacked yeah. box. It was unbelievable. How important – I mean, it's amazing the number of – you talked about Los Angeles. It, it seemed like oh, there were so many games last year that were season-defining moments. It's unbelievable. So, yeah, we. I mean, yeah, there was a lot of good ones. That was a great one, though, and that was, that was a, a fourth down and two, and Lamar really wanted to go for it. And uh, that play was really for fourth and one, but what the heck? Um, <laughs> we 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 got as many big big bodies on the field as we could, and we just said, hey, you know what? It's us against you, and made a better better team win. And uh, so the players did a great job of making it work. You know, you talked about Lamar's leadership. How how important is that? To, like for him to come to the sidelines and be so adamant about going for it how how contagious is, is that for the for the entire team oh yeah yeah that's huge and um not only that but it's just a, it's a great sign of his competitiveness um to want to do that and you know i don't know if you want to do that every time but you know quite a bit quite a bit of the time coach harbaugh will be will be very aggressive in those situations well, I think it's interesting, the question earlier about uh, Lamar and his his playoff record, I, I think people have a short memory when it comes to the quality of his leadership and his competitive nature. You know, you're not defined by one game. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can never let yourself get defined by one game in this league. Um, it's a process, and his journey is underway, but it's still – towards the beginning of it. And there's a lot of uh, opportunities in the future to uh, learn from and keep continue to improve. But uh, now what Lamar has been able to accomplish in a short amount of time should be inspirational to anybody that competes at anything. Well, I think that's a really good segue in terms of being inspirational. Cause as you know, from your experience uh, growing up with, with Matthew and, and, you know, being here with with our athletes, uh, they are extremely inspirational. And we, um, as you know, Coach, we're celebrating our 50th anniversary and we're launching a, a concept and a campaign called Experience Inclusion. And I think this is a really good example of that, where we can come together as a group and have somebody like you uh, online with our guys. Um, and like I said, it's a great turnout tonight. Unbelievable to have uh, over 45 individuals join us this evening. So that's really a testimony to you um, and, and the, really what the Ravens have done in the community, but really uh, with your leadership and your recognition of, of all of our athletes and a, and a great tribute to Thomas for his leadership in reaching out to you. So what I'd like to do is see if, if, if in closing, if there's a, a message that you might share 
that would not only be inspirational to these guys, but that we can share with the rest of our athletes when we have our virtual block party next Saturday. Yeah, uh, that sounds like a great event. And, uh, you know, to all, all the Special Olympics athletes, you know, I'm, I'm sorry you're not able to compete at your summer games this year like you normally do. But uh, I encourage all of you to hang in there during these challenging times. Uh, follow the protocols that are uh, being laid out for us. And uh, keep working hard and staying positive. Special Olympics has had a very positive impact on my family and my life. And I know how powerful it is. So congratulations as you celebrate the 50th anniversary. But make sure keep uh, building, keep uh, improving, keep being a better teammate, keep being a better, uh, keep being coachable from your coaches. Uh, and your work is never done. And um, once we start playing football again, everybody's got to promise that they're going to root for the Ravens and uh, make sure you get all your family members and friends to root for the Ravens. Is it a deal? Yeah. Hey, Jason, why don't you open them up so you can hear everybody say it's a deal. It's a deal. It's a deal. No, come on. It's a big deal to sign. I'm going to sign that contract right now and say that. I want Jason. It's awesome. Uh, hey, deal. Coach. Okay, right. uh, on I guess behalf. he left already. Wait, guys. I want Jason. Get in there, Tom. Yep. Is he still there? He's still there. Hello? Yeah, he's still here. Not everybody's right. here. Hey, how are you? I want Jason. I want to get to something. Hold on, Jim. I'll mute again and get back to you. Hold on. No problem. <laughs> All right. Just one. Uh, uh, all right. Coach, you can unmute yourself and then. And. And Jim, you're good. All right. So, Coach, just I've got my thank you sign here. I'm pointing to on behalf of all our athletes that were on this evening and all 8,716 across the state of Maryland. We want to thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this evening. Um, and the last words are, go Ravens. All right. Thank you very much. Enjoyed it. Coach, thanks so much. Good luck to you and the entire team, and we'll all be pulling for you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Take care now.